In this video, we're going to be talking about the uh, factoring technique that I like to call X factor. Um, it could all just also just be called X technique. Um, it's a factoring method that allows us to break down quadratics into smaller pieces here and then eventually solve for a value of X. All right, so factoring again is where we break something down. Um, in this case, we're going to be breaking down these quadratics into two binomials. And then if we multiply these binomials back together, we should get back to the beginning where we started. So we can build it back up or tear it down, doesn't matter. Factoring allows us to tear it down. Uh, we're going to be using a technique called FOIL to check um, that we factored correctly. So let's briefly talk about what foiling was and how to do that. We need it to check our answers here. So the F part of FOIL stands for first. So if we look at the first terms here, the first term in each parenthesis, we're going to multiply it together. So x times x is x squared. Then we do the O part, which stands for outside. So we multiply the outside um, parts of this uh, binomial here. These little terms is what they're called. x times 6 is positive 6, x. Then we do the i part, which stands for inside. So the inside terms, or inside part of our binomials here. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And then we do the l part, which is our, the last terms. So the last term in each parenthesis here, negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. Last step is always to combine any like terms. So we have 6x minus 4x. That gives us a positive 2x. And we still have that x squared. And we still have the negative 24. Is that what we started with? Yeah, so we factored it correctly. This, we can say, is our, our factored quadratic and it's going to allow us to solve for x. We'll get to that in a sec though. So using the same example here, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, we also need to talk about GCF. It's a type of factoring but it's pretty much the most basic form of factoring. It allows us to break something down into smaller more manageable pieces and in this case uh, with quadratics it allows us to break the quadratic down into something that we know how to factor. Sometimes if there's too many numbers, too many terms, or um, the power is too high, or these numbers are just too difficult to work with, we can use this technique to break it down into something a little bit more manageable. So GCF really stands for greatest common factor. Greatest common factor. So we're looking for a number it is a factor, meaning uh, if you break it down, you can multiply it by another number to get back to the beginning. We want the biggest one that really all the terms that we're looking at have in common. So what number do they all have inside of them that we could take out? Um, 18 is a multiple of 6, and so is 24. So 6 um, is the biggest number that we can take out of both of these numbers. So if we take it out and we put it on the outside of the parentheses, then what we write on the inside is, or write what's left after we take a 6 out is um, the quotient or you could think of it as these numbers are divided by the greatest common factor and so what's left so we're really doing 18 divided by 6 so that leaves 3 and 24 divided by 6 which leaves 4 and the sign always just stays the same. The numbers keep their sign. So 18 plus 24 is really the same as 3 plus 4 times 6. So 3 plus 4 is 7. 6 times 7 is 42. And maybe that's easier than adding these two together in your head. Sometimes it is. With this example, it's not that difficult. But we're going to get into stuff that's a little more difficult to do in our head. And this is why GCF comes in um, pretty valuable here. Let's do this next one. Uh, what what number do these two have in common? What's the biggest number that they both have inside of them? Well, 8 is divisible by 4, so is 12. 
And that's the biggest number that goes into both of them, so let's take a 4 out and leave the quotient behind. So 8x divided by 4 and 12 divided by 4. So 8x divided by 4 is 2x, 12 divided by 4 is 3. So now we're getting into more complicated stuff where we can't simplify in here, but if we did know x, it might make it easier than, than what it is over here. But here's a one that's a little more complicated. Here's an actual quadratic. This is where we're going to start factoring. Now what number goes into all of these? Well, 3. And so we divide each term by 3. 3x three squared divided by 3 leaves x squared. Positive 3x divided by 3 leaves x, positive x. And negative 9 divided by 3, sorry, leaves negative 3. And so we'll find that today we don't know how to factor this. We don't know how to solve for x here. But by using GCF, we can break it down into this quadratic. And we'll actually know by the end of today how to factor something in this form. So we didn't know how to do it here. We use GCF to get it down to something we will know how to do. We'll get to that in a sec as well. Let's just find out what x factoring is to start with. Draw yourself an x. Uh, remember, we got to remember our standard form and where a, b, and c are. Um, we're going to write a little recipe here. So we ask ourselves, what is the product of a and c? So what is a times c? We're going to put that on the bottom of the x. We're going to put whatever b is up top. And then we're going to ask ourselves, what are factors of the bottom here that add up to whatever the top is? And we're going to put those two factors on the side. Okay, so these are factors over here. Factors, factors, oops, oops, oops. Okay. So these two factors have to add up to the top. Sorry, add up to the top and multiply to get the bottom. All right, so let's do the example here. What's B? That goes up top. It's positive 3. What is A times C? Well, C is negative 10. A is 1. So negative 10 times 1 is negative 10. Now ask yourself this question, what factors of negative 10, what two numbers that when multiplied give you negative 10, but add up to 3? Think of factors of negative 10. We got 10 and 1. Don't forget those because sometimes they are the factors that we need to use. But we, there's no way we can make these add up to 3. So what other factors? We got 5 and 2. Well, can we make those add up to... 3 and multiply to get negative 10. Sure, if we have a positive 5 and a negative 2, well, those add up to 3, but they multiply or are factors of negative 10. Now we move on to our parentheses. This is our factored form. Two sets of parentheses. Each set of parentheses, the first term is always going to be whatever variable letter we're using in the problem. And this one happens to be x, so we're going to put an x first in each set of parentheses. Then you're going to write the factors that you found here. So we got a positive 5, so we're going to write plus 5. And we got a negative 2, so we're going to write negative 2 in the next one. We could FOIL to check and make sure we did it right. x times x is x squared. Outside, x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Positive 5 times x is positive 5x. And 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Combine our middle terms here with negative 2x plus 5x. That's 3x. So x squared plus 3x minus 10. Is that what we started with? Yep, we factored it correctly. So we're almost done. We haven't solved for x yet. We need to take these sets of parentheses and do something to them. We need to set each of them equal to 0 and solve for x. So x plus 5 is our first set. Set it equal to 0 and solve for x. Well, we can solve for x by subtracting 5 from both sides, and then we get x is negative 5. We also set x minus 2, the second set of parentheses, equal to 0 and solve for x. Well, solve for x, we add 2 to both sides, and we get x is positive 2. So 
x has two answers. It has a negative 5 and it has a positive 2. So x equals, that's what we finally write, 2 and we just say comma negative 5. So that is what x equals. We just solved for x using a quadratic and we used the x factor technique to do it. Okay, let's try another one here. Go a little bit faster. We draw an x. Make it a little bigger than that. A times C on the bottom, well that's just 12. B on top, that's 8. Factors of 12, two numbers that when multiply equal 12, that add up to 8. Uh, factors of 12 would be 6 and 2. Well, that those add up to 8, if they're both positive, right? Draw yourself two sets of parentheses. The variable letter goes first. And the two numbers that you found on the side of your x, those two factors, positive 6 for this case, and positive 2. We could FOIL to check x times x is x squared, plus 2x, plus 6x, plus 12. Combine the middle terms, we get x squared plus 8x plus 12. So that checks out. We factored it correctly, so we must be on the right track here. Set each of these parentheses equal to 0. x plus 6 equals 0. Solve for x. Subtract x from both sides. You get x is negative 6. Set the other set of parentheses equal to 0. So subtract 2 from both sides. x is also negative 2. Alright, let's get into one that's a little trickier here. Remember how I said try and GCF first? Well, in this case, we have to because we don't know how to factor something where a is greater than 1 yet. The x factor doesn't work for that yet. So we need to divide by the greatest common factor. I'm going to take a 2 out of everything. Write the quotient. Write what's left when you divide all of your terms by that greatest common factor. And now we have a quadratic where a is equal to 1. We can use our x technique. Negative 24 on the bottom. Negative 2 up top. Factors are numbers that when multiply add up, or factors that multiply to get negative 24, but add up to negative 2. Let's think of factors of negative 24. Uh, 6 and 4. Well, that'll work if it's negative 6 and positive 4. Those add up to negative 2, but multiply to get negative 24. So draw two sets of parentheses variable in the first spot on each one and your factors to fill out the rest. Set each of your parentheses equal to zero. In this case we would add six to both sides and get a positive six for x or set x plus four equal to zero. Subtract four from both sides and x is negative as well. Alright. Let's move on here. What else do we got? I guess that's it. So that's the x-factor technique. Um, you can always check your answers. We got enough time for that, so real quick. Just if I want to make sure that 6 and negative 4 are really answers for x, I could plug them back in. I could plug them back into this one or this one. It should equal 0. So what is 6 squared times 2? Well, 6 squared is 36. 36 times 2 is 72. We're going to subtract 2 times 6. That's 12. And subtract 24. 